So now at 2,000, you know, I'm just almost a straight line around here, okay? I can see myself. See? Now we're not quite done yet, but if you look, you can start to see yourself in it. So now, has anybody used microfiber papers? Love these things. So now I think the pink microfiber is probably 2,800 or something to that effect. I can't remember. But all right, Leah. Yeah, I want to see it. I'm a little right. curious. I'm skeptical. Oh, that's beautiful. You could turn it out. Yeah, I can see my yeah. teeth in it. Very shiny. You can literally see yourself. Yeah. Uh -huh. I so, the first time. Yeah. now, you know, in a shop environment, about 90% of the time I'll stop there. But sometimes, you know, I may go just with a rouge wheel a little bit. But at this, that now we achieve the level of polish we needed to achieve by a different method. We didn't move the metal, we removed the metal because we know that white gold and white gold solder do what? Move the same. Rate. Okay, so when we're going to polish this, all right, so we're going to have a ring. Let's pretend we've got a big old diamond in Now we've got a ruby. Okay, so we've got a ruby in here, and we're going to have to polish this ring. Okay, that how do we go about this when you've got all kinds of other stuff across the top? Okay, my work zone was right here. Okay. So I'm gonna divide this ring into about thirds. And once again, I literally do this every single time. This is not just every now and then. Okay, so this is gonna be my work zone. This is what I care about. Main reason I care about it, what's the first place when you hand a ring to somebody who asked you to size it, what's the first thing they're gonna look at when you hand it back to them? The bottom of the ring. They're not gonna be looking right here. They're gonna start looking right here. Okay, so this is what I care about the most because this is what's going to draw the most attention. Okay, so what I'm going to do is on this bottom third of this ring, I am going to make sure that I get this when I go to 320. That, and like up here, most of this will be light triple E, light rouge, or whatever. But when I go to 320 here, when I go to 600 here, when I go to 1500, I make sure everything below this line is 100% what I'm trying to do, okay? This right here, I call it the bleed over zone. Because when you're trying to get this little spot right here to 1500, you're getting this spot probably 1500, there's some six, there's some 320 here, and stuff like that, okay? Because I can get aggressive in this region right through here with Triple E and Rouge because I don't have any work there. Okay, but if I try to get aggressive with it down here with Triple E and Rouge, I'm going to show a line and show my work. So I make sure that everything down in this zone is 100% to 1500, okay? So when I get ready to polish that ring on there, like I'll start with Triple E, when I'm polishing it, I will hold my fingers here and I will polish everything of the ring except where I did the work, okay? And I can get as aggressive as I want up here to take out the little scratches and day-to-day -day wear and tear and stuff like that. And like I say, going in through here, that I, this is just regular work, just triple E, clean, polish, all that sort of stuff. And so then, when I've got all of this triple E up here, I will come down here and I'll mean I'll just kiss it with triple E, and that's it. Okay, maybe not even do it with triple E. Okay, because at 1500 you really don't need it, or especially at 2400 you don't need it. Then when I switch over to my rouge wheel, same thing, I will hold my ring here. Then I will rouge this all real well because I can get aggressive with it because I don't have any work right there. And then when I get ready to do this, I will just barely touch it with a triple E wheel, or excuse me, with a rouge wheel and throw it in the cleaner, and you will never see the work ever on white belt. okay? So, let's wrap this up in three minutes. So, 
what are my methods of doing this every single time? Let's start with yellow gold. Okay, I go, and this is after file, okay? After I filed it and everything like that, I'm gonna go 320, I'm gonna go triple E, I'm gonna go rouge, okay? That's all it requires. When I go with white gold, I'm gonna go 320, I'm gonna go 600, I'm gonna go triple E, I'm gonna go rouge, okay? If it's something big, broad, and wide like this, where there's a whole lot of area to polish, I'm gonna go 320 to 600 to 1500 to Tripoli to Rouge, okay? And depending upon how wide it is and how much I think something's gonna jump in, I can add a step or two here, okay? But with white gold, almost 100% of the time, I go 320, 600, triple E rouge. If it's something wider with, that just needs more attention and polishing and I don't want seams to show up, I'll go 320, 600, 1500. And when you go from 320 to 600, that if you're not fully at 320, if you're kind of at 320 and you still have file marks in it, then you go to 600, the 600 will not get the file marks out, okay? So you need to make sure when you're at 320, you're 100% at 320. Then when you go to 600, because if you still leave a bunch of 320 scratches in there, when you get to 1500, you are just, you know, 1500 has a hard time, you know, moving 600 to start with. But when it comes to platinum, platinum is a metal that does not move. You ever just take it back to your polisher? Because people come in with a platinum ring, oh, can you polish my ring and make it look good? You're like, no. Nope. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, I can refinish it for you if you'd like to leave it with me for a few days and, you know, just give me $150 and I'll refinish it and go through all of these steps and burnish things down and, you know, then it'll look exactly like it does, you know, in about three or four days. You know, you can hit it with a rouge wheel just a little bit, but when we go in and we do a platinum ring, size of platinum ring, that we always, I'll go yellow, or I'll go, uh, you know, solder, file, weld, whichever method I use to join the two pieces, but I will go on platinum. I will go 320, 600, 1500, 2000, 2400, I think that tank is, and then a lot of times after that, I'll go up to 3,000 as well. One of these, other, I think this one here is a 3,000 paper. But because platinum does not move at the molecular level, that if you just sit there, I mean, have you ever just tried to polish one on Tripoli and you just sit there and stare at it and then you get done and it's still just, all the dents are still in it, it's because platinum does not furnish. It does not move at the molecular level. So you have to use a different method, and so instead of burnishing and moving the platinum, you just basically sand file, remove the platinum, and once again, you're removing this much. You know, you're not thinning it out. Now, if you were sitting there doing this and wearing it out with 320 or 200 or something like that, yeah, you're gonna take a bunch of ring away. But, uh, uh, any questions? My time's up. What about silver? Oh, silver. The same thing. With silver, generally, I generally go with silver. Glad you mentioned that. This is generally my silver oil right here. Now, silver, silver, sterling silver, and most silver solders tend to burnish at about the same rate. About the only thing with silver sometimes, there's differences in the color between the solders and the binder materials and stuff like that. And that's, you know, that's a metallurgy issue. That's not a, a scene that's a physical dip in something or whatever. But with silver, you know, it usually is just one of those. You know, dip it in rhodium, 